when I was growing up in the 1960s, I noticed cameras. And one of the things I noticed was whether they were in black cases or brown cases. And um, as a child of about five or six, I decided I wanted a camera in a black case because they seemed a bit more sophisticated. Well, the camera I'm talking today about today is not in a black case, it's in a brown case. And at first sight, the cover is quite, you've got a plastic case part at the front here, and it's trying to look like leather, but it's not. And when we open up the case, what we have is an Angfa camera, and it's an Angfa Itola from about 1960. These cameras were made, the Itola 1, 2 and 3 were made between 1955 and I think about 1961. Um, 1960 definitely saw the decline almost completely of the Snap Happy Amateur 120 camera and for the sort of holiday snapper cameras really began to develop into the 126 format, the Instamatic format. However, this model as I said is from 1959 and what we have is a very light 120 camera in a plastic body. If you think what was had gone before this, we are thinking about the Atelet, I'm sorry, um, Atelet 1, 2 and 3 cameras which were folding cameras of a good quality. This is slightly more down market. I've had done some box cameras and what we have here is a little bit different than at first it seems because though it appears to have a flat lens here remember with 120 film with um, which is medium format we have a large area here to cover so if we have a 75 mil lens we need 75 millimeters from the lens to the surface for focal um, for the focal length and this is shorter Obviously on a folding camera, you've got that length with the fold. This isn't a folding camera, but the lens does pop out. As you can see, there it is popped out. So then we've got the desired focal length. It has a focusing lens. It is not the fastest lens in the world. It's a 6.3 lens but it is a focusing lens. It only has two shutter speeds. Those shutter speeds, well, three if you include B. B for bulb, that means the um, shutter will open for a length of time as you want, which is excellent for nighttime photography. You have a 30th here, which will be good for flash, and you also have a 100th, so not a great range. And the aperture, as I said, is between six, well, it only gives you two aperture settings, 6.3 and 11. But it does give you a focusing scale, the lens focuses. So this is a sort of amateur bottom level camera. However, it's not right at the bottom and we do have a focusing lens. We, um, it's a mainly plastic body, as you can see here. The viewfinder is very clear and in the middle. This camera is in very nice working order. You can hear the shutter there and the shutter, um, leaf shutter seems to be working very nicely. I almost bought this by accident. I was looking at cameras on eBay and I noticed this little camera for um, a very low price. Um, it didn't seem much interest. I put in a bid and I think I got it for the grand sum of £3.50 plus postage, which just shows you that there's still a good buy to have sometimes on eBay. All depends what other people are after and they are perhaps not after one of these, which is a bit of a shame because if you compare it to something like a Holger or a Diana camera, it's probably high quality. And it's definitely got this 
uh, design interest with the lens here and I suspect the quality might not to be too bad because it's an Agna lens. So, and as I said, you load the film in here to here. We have on here a nice little Agfa logo. Remember, Agfa were an enormous German European film manufacturing company, mainly film, but did do cameras as well. So let's see what happens when I put a film into this camera. The first image is of a cottage in Corf Castle and I was really pleased with the tones here. It's really sharp. When you think what a basic camera this um, Isolé is, I was really pleased with this image. And the second image, equally as sharp. Remember this lens is a very basic lens and you have only two f-stops, 6.5 and sorry 6.8 and 11 However, this image works. And this isn't quite as sharp. This is a fascinating house in the um, small town of um, Corf Castle. This window above the door is extraordinary. But again, the image is very usable. This camera is turning out to be a little bit of a gem. Again, I was walked down the side of the castle and this isn't the best condition to take photographs in, but however, I'm quite pleased with the sharpness. I was pleased with the composition here. Yes, there could be better a range of tones, but, and this image from the hill, I think I've got a little bit of camera shake here. However, what I am finding with this camera is that all the images touch wood are usable. This is a camera, remember, that I think I paid about £3 for. This is a camera that was basically ignored on eBay. And I think it's a camera that a lot of people think because it's quite cheap. And it has only, as I keep on saying, it's only got two shutter speeds, a 30th and 1 hundredth of uh, um, 125 of a second. And yet the lens, as you can see from these photographs, is highly usable. The camera was extremely light to use. And I would say this is a good camera to have in the back of the car or even in a rucksack as a medium format camera. Because of those, these images are only scanned into the computer. I think they would print extremely well. I used a former 100 pan film and I developed it in ID 11 for 10 minutes with a dilution of one to one. And this final image, image, these two images are of the hill at Abbotsbury in Dorset. And again, we've got a really nice tonal range. We've got some sky appearing. The conditions were slightly strange. We have had a lot of rain and it was slightly damp at the time. But again, I was, at, I was pleased with the tonal range here. I was. In, a, in conclusion, really pleased with this little bit of plastic camera. It's extremely light. Yes, it's not the highest quality, but it's a usable com um, quality. Um, and if you find one, why not give one a go? Bye for now.